It's messy Monday, y'all. Let's get into it. We got a couple of patients that I got to see, diagnose, and some I got to write a prescription for. This edition is the break up to make up edition. Okay, the streets are talking, and this is what the streets are saying. They brought in little Kim, the Queen B, the original Queen B, the uh, you got it going on. What, what, uh, what, what, that Kim. The Kim that made the grunt before Rick Ross, the, uh, the original beehive little Kim. The little Kim that used to, I used to be scared of the dick. Now I throw lips to the shit. That little Kim. Okay. The streets are saying that allegedly little Kim is back with Mr. Papers. Mr. Papers is the father of Kim's only child, Royal Rain. You know, these celebrities love giving these children crazy ass motherfucking names. So Kim is back with Royal. She was with the great leader. He's a businessman or something, but apparently he wasn't great enough to lead her ass into being with him. I guess Kim wants to be back with Mr. Papers, allegedly, because he probably got that assault with a deadly weapon between his goddamn legs to break off the queen bitch. Little Kim spent some time in quarantine with the great leader, the old boyfriend. I didn't even know they had broke up and they stopped following each other on Instagram now, Mr. Papers and Kim are following each other. He posted a video with Kim with some song playing. <sighs> I, I I don't know about the song. I love you, Kim. The original Beehive, Kim's fans, I'm part of that original Beehive. I don't fuck with the other Beehive. But they have swarmed to Mr. Papers' Instagram and have threatened him and told him, nigga, don't fuck up. You got a second chance. Get it together. So, since Kim wants to be back with Mr. Papers, this is what I am going to diagnose with Kim. I'm going to diagnose her with wanting to get that old thing back. Because, you know, when you messing with somebody and y'all used to have a good time between the sheets together, sometimes when you break up with the other person, you go back to the old thing. So, this is what I'm going to tell you, Kim. Because sometimes you have a track history of bad relationships. I'm going to write you out a damn prescription for taking your goddamn time. Now, you can fuck Mr. Papers because y'all got a baby together. You can do all that good stuff, but don't let your goddamn feelings get into it. So, I need to write your ass two prescriptions. The second one will be to contain your goddamn feelings, Kim. Don't let this nigga hurt you again. And be sure to not let your goddamn house get foreclosed on. Focus, Kim, and keep your shit together. <sighs> Out of here. The next one is Keisha Cole and Nico. Now, a lot of people have a damn problem with Keisha and Nico because Keisha is older. Let me tell you something. I think if it was a man being with a younger girl, y'all wouldn't have a problem with the shit. Y'all are full of self-fucking hate <laughs> because... It's nothing wrong with being with somebody younger. It's nothing wrong with being somebody older. If you get to an older motherfucker, the motherfucker going to probably have it together, hopefully so. They probably going to be better in bed. But in this case, Keisha was messing with Nico because Nico probably is young and had that assault with a deadly weapon between his damn legs and just broke Keisha ass off. Y'all see Keisha ain't been able to put out no good shit no more. She ain't been able to sing right. She probably in the parking lot selling fish plays. She want to do a versus battle with Ashanti. Keisha, we, we don't care. I mean, her and Nico didn't work out. She got a baby by him. I don't think nothing is wrong with it. It's no hate. If you can turn out a younger goddamn man, then Keisha do it. Get get what you need to get, baby. So for Keisha, I, I'm going to prescribe her. What can I prescribe? Because she done went from him to messing with Bow Wow to Birdman and you knocking out Birdman windows allegedly and keying up Bow Wow car allegedly. I, I don't know where else to go with Keisha. I mean, you done been from Birdman, allegedly, to Bow Wow, to Nico, the unknown dude, and y'all slid in each other. Damn, Keisha, I don't know what to tell you. Get you a goddamn preacher, Keisha. That's what you do. 
Change your life. That's my prescription for you. I want you to change your motherfucking life. Because the singing career, I think everybody reach a point when it's over. That part of your life is over. You can tour, but right now we got the damn coronavirus. So ain't nobody going to no damn shows. Get you a goddamn preacher. I want you to buy you a Cadillac with the tire on the damn back and drive around in that shit and be the first lady. And I need your church heads to be so damn big that you block out everybody behind you. Block out the motherboard. Block out the motherfucking deacons. When they open the doors of the church, I want your head to be so motherfucking big they can't even see the doors of the church opening. Okay? So, Keisha, that's my prescription to you, lamb chop. I, I can't do nothing else with you. <sighs> Next patient we got to see. Kanye to the Kanye to the West. I used to love Kanye. Listen to me. Kanye was one of my biggest celebrity crushes. When Kanye first came out and he had the backpack, I got me a motherfucking backpack and I was rocking that shit. When Kanye used to produce the songs that had the samples and speed up the damn samples with the voices. Da -da 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 -da. Y'all remember that shit. Kanye... Everybody keeps saying because his mama died, it affected him, which I do believe that. But Kanye already had issues. Now, Kanye's damn problem is he linked up with the wrong bra. He should have never got with Kim. The Kardashians destroy black men. That's my diagnosis. The Kardashians have destroyed more black men than Honda drops accords. Just say no. Treat them like they are drugs. When you mess with a Kardashian, you will not come out the same. You see what uh, Chloe did to Lamar? Now, Lamar might have had a little problems, but they suck in the ones that's already trouble, but they can squeeze their money out of them. How you squeezing the ketchup out the bottle and it ain't no more ketchup left and you just need that little taste off in the corner? They squeeze the black man. <laughs> Stay away from the Kardashians. You see uh, Chloe with uh, Tristan and all that stuff that happened. And she stole him allegedly from the girl. And then said Jordan allegedly did something with him. <sighs> we don't feel sorry for you, Chloe. Okay? We do not. Kanye should have ran from Kim when he had the damn chance. The only one to make it successfully away from the Kardashians' grip was Reggie Bush. But you see, he got a wife that looked like Kim. And Ray J put him on the map. The Kardashians are famous off of the sister. One sister. Not all of them, but one sucking dick. Kim was sucking Ray J dick so goddamn good. I was looking at my dick like... I feel the shit in my dick. That's how you suck a dick. <sighs> but Chris is a hell of a manager. Now she made them girls famous from one of them sucking dick. And you lied and getting Kylie on the cover of Forbes. Chris needs to be my damn manager. But they will destroy black men. Run, Kanye. It, I, I don't even know. I know mental health is real. But in Kanye's case he needs to go outside like your parents used to send you outside or your grandma or your grandpa or your auntie your uncle whoever used to send your ass outside and tell you get the biggest switch you can find and if you get a little switch i'm gonna beat your ass for getting a little one get the biggest one you can find because i'm gonna beat your ass we need to get somebody to beat kanye ass Kristen set up if they even get a divorce Kim allegedly still get a big life insurance policy that's like uh, over $20 million. So she said, you got four kids, Kanye. She going to take you for all you got. So Kanye allegedly went to some mental health place. He didn't stay but 10 minutes. He left. He went back to his ranch. The police allegedly came there to see if he was okay. Kim has drove him crazy. Anytime somebody suck your dick that good, they will drive your ass crazy. Because Kim is like, gone, out of there. I can't even write Kanye prescription for anything. I'm just going to say, Kanye, self-quarantine by yourself for a year. Find you some Sade to listen to. Okay, I want you to get some Sade. I want you to get some Mary J and listen to. And then I want you to listen to some Anita Baker. Because we need to get some life back into you. Because the Kardashians have sucked it out. Stay away from Kim. Pay her the money. Cam with them children. FaceTime with them. 
until you get in a better place. You never came out the sunken place. You are sunken beneath the damn sea like the movie The Abyss. <sighs> That's all I can do with Kanye. Okay. Next. The song Entanglements with the S by August Arsena. <sighs> I I like the idea of the song. I think he has a right to tell his side because he was hurt that she said entanglement. So he says, you know what? I'm going to make some money off this shit and say how the hell I feel. But the song was okay, but Rick Ross outshined him on the damn song. And then here come August with the auto tune a little bit. I don't want that. Sing. The only people I want to hear on auto tune is Zap and Roger and T Pain. Don't uh, auto tune. No. Rick Rostin took the spotlight from your ass on your own shit. I'm gonna write you a prescription, and I want you to not get your feelings involved when you are fucking. I know you have that assault with a deadly weapon between your legs. You keep fucking. You let them suck you, and you go on about your way. Don't get your feelings involved. Jada knew she had the upper hand. I'm not mad at Jada because I think a woman can do anything a man can do. And if it was a will messing with a younger girl, people would be more forgiving. So, August, I want you to go on about your life. I want you to keep your damn feelings to yourself. Pull out your assault and assault them with your deadly weapon. That's what I want you to do. Now, before I wrap up, I have to spotlight a truly unappreciated person. It's something I'm going to start doing to acknowledge black people that might not be known, but they're known, but they're not known by all of us. This person I want to spat like is Candy Staten. She's a soul singer. She's done disco. She's singing gospel now. Candy Staten, a lot of people know her from Young Hearts Run Free. If you never heard the song, look it up. You'll love it because she's telling a story. Um, the song was written about her life. She used to be married to Clarence Carter, the blind dude. That's saying I'll be stroking. He used to beat her. How you let a blind man beat you? I don't know. Because you going to be looking for me. You can't find me, nigga. You can't see. But she's had like a real tumultuous life. Um, She just had cancer. It's in remission. But she has a very soulful voice. She has an amazing story. And I'm a big music person, and that song, Young Hearts Run Free, saved me. Because I was dealing with a young man, and he was very slow. He was older than me, and slow men are better in bed. Because all they think about is fucking. But the motherfucker was no good. He was cheating left and right. And I was younger. I couldn't get it together. We laid down one night. We did what we did. We had some entanglements between them damn sheets. And I was just like confused because I was just like, you going to do right, you going to do right. And the motherfucker couldn't even say, yeah, I'm going to do right. He was just like, what you want me to say? I ain't, I ain't going to change. That morning, y'all, I woke up and I heard this song on the radio. And it was Candy Stadden singing Young Hearts Run Free, but I never knew who she was. I never heard the song, but the lyrics was like self-reservation and don't end up like me. And it, it, the shit spoke to me. So I stood up in the bed and I was like, you know what? I don't need this slow motherfuckers. This motherfucker can't even add five and five and get ten. So what am I doing with him? So Candy Stadden gave me the power to leave. That situation. Now, I ended up in some more fucked up situations, but that situation, I left. And she is an amazing singer. If you listen to her, she has another song. Um, it's a Bobby Walmack song that she remade called One More Chance on Love. Go listen to those two songs by her. You will see what I'm talking about. She has a soulful voice. She has a great message, and I love her. And she is amazing. She's still doing her thing. Y'all can follow her on Instagram. So, we talked the talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. Y'all be sure to subscribe, like, and share. And enjoy your messy Monday. I came through on Life Coach Mode and shut this down.